Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Welcome to Real Raw Health with your hosts, Nikki Burnett of Taste Life Nutrition and Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and the health our pets bring to us with love. And Nikki and I kind of touch into human health a little bit too, because we're both passionate about that and the joy with it. So <laughs> welcome Nikki to this week's show. Thanks. Um, I, I am excited about it because I think this is one that's um, kind of near and dear to everybody's heart or maybe everybody's nose. <laughs> Dear and dear. Yes, I'm going to second that. Like, I don't think, I think if you own a dog, you've smelled their farts. It's yeah. just, you're sitting there on the couch, it's late at night, and then all of a sudden, you know what the sad part is, Nikki? I get blamed for it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have too, multiple times. Yeah, like <laughs> I get singled out. And I was like, no, 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 it was the dog, I swear. And so, yeah, and they are the worst smell in the world. They, they are, they're, they're the epitome of silent, but deadly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to second that. And uh -huh. so, um, why, why are they farting or burping so much? I, tr you know, we feed raw, we do all that we can. Why is it happening? <laughs> well, I kind of want to start with burps because I have one who every time she eats every time she burps and this is the loudest burp that I've ever heard out of a dog. I mean, it's like a teenage boy every time. And so the funny thing is, I mean, we hear dogs burp, you know, I think that there's a different reason for the most part and why they burp and then why they fart. Um, but for her, I, you know, I, I wonder, does she just eat so fast? Is it because, because she's the one who was shot in the face, does it have something to do with that? But, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it's totally normal and it's, you know, if it happens, it happens. And we just yeah. have to laugh about it because it is loud and it's just really funny. And we've had her now for three years and there's not a meal that's gone by that this isn't, hasn't happened. And I laugh every time. So <laughs> she's right. That's like, she's like, Hey mom, yeah, just give it to me. I'll burp it up. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that is hysterical. <laughs> it's really, it is really funny. I've not seen anything like it in my time with dogs. Um, but I think that farting is a different thing. And I think that there are, there are multiple reasons that, that dogs fart, you know, and there's, you know, it can be with us too, but it can be a lack of the ability to break down their food. It can be too high carbohydrate. It could be an unhealthy microbiome, you know, their gut bugs. It can be, um, infection. It can be, I mean, we can kind of, the list can go on. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have, um, I've had the question though, they, you know, the question was, I'm feeding my dog kibble and I'm not getting the farts, but now that they're getting raw, they're getting the farts. And so that can be, you know, kind of what we want to, you know, the, the, maybe one of the topics at least that we want to think about is why is yeah. that? Um, and I think in, in part, the reason is when they're fed kibble, their immune system's low, their, their gut microbiome is not very healthy. Kibble is seen as a carbohydrate. Dogs aren't supposed to eat carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. It's not a healthy food. And so you start to introduce something else and it can create, for some, it can create some upset and some, whether it's some little gassiness or diarrhea or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, can just kind of get stinky. Yeah. <laughs> now in the pre-show, we were talking a little bit about enzymes and yeah. you noticed a change with your dog. Can you share with everybody that story yeah. you told me? Yeah. So I think it's important to understand why I feed enzymes. And so if you've heard, you've heard us talk about this before, uh, but I think it's worth repeating is dogs in most cases get their digestive enzymes from the animals that they would eat in the wild. The same with their probiotics. So they would go after, they would eat the gut contents and they'd eat all the other stuff around. Right. And so all of that's really important. Um, and so they're not getting the same enzymes, the same probiotics from the food that we feed and they don't, I, I don't even know actually how much, that's something that I should, I need to look up. I don't know how much of their own digestive enzymes they produce. They have a pancreas. Um, so I'm assuming that they produce some, but do they produce what they're supposed to get? And they're supposed to get others from the animal. And so what we know though, is they're not getting what they typically would from the, from the animal. And so 
it's a good, mm -hmm. in my mind, it's a good practice to feed them digestive enzymes to make sure to, to ensure that they are breaking down their proteins and their fats and, you know, if any kind of vegetable matter that they're getting, um, properly. And I always add hydrochloric acid. Now their gut is very, very acidic already, mm -hmm. but yeah. I wonder if they're being fed kibble, if maybe that acidity is, if it's not as acidic, I think that there's a potential mm -hmm. that they're creating less acidity. And so you all, again, you start to switch over to, from kibble to raw and they're not breaking down their food as, as, as fully as they should. And so what enzymes do Right. is they break down the protein into short chain amino acids or even single amino acids. That's the goal because in order for the body to utilize those amino acids and put them back together for muscle and bone and, and you know, neurotransmitters and those things, they have to be broken down into the single amino acids. Now, the story is I, I have a, a particular brand that I have been feeding to my dogs, it works really well. And I notice the difference if I don't feed them the enzymes, if I do feed them the enzymes, that they tend to get gassy. And so I always make sure that we have the enzymes and it, it all seems to work really, really well. So I ran out of what I give them and there's another digestive enzyme, another company that I really like that I use for my clients a lot. Something about it is different. And what I haven't done, and I'll, you know, full disclosure, I haven't compared the ingredients, but something's different. It still has um, digestive enzymes and also has hydrochloric acid or betaine hydrochloride, but right. the girls are stanky, just big time. And I don't know which one it is. It, it's, it's at least one or two of them. It might be all three of them. So what could it be? Could it be that there's not enough of the, 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 the proteases to help break down the proteins? Is, is there not enough of the lipase to, to help break down the fat? Is there something there that's not quite the same? Um, and so, you know, so far, I mean, that, that's, that's what I've, that's, you know, what I've seen so far. You know, I was at a question while you were saying that, um, how much tripe do you feed? Not enough. I have a hard time finding it. Um, I know that you get it through the company that you use. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I go to our butcher who, who breaks yep. down the, the, the meat and the organ and the bone. And mm -hmm. then I, I can find other organs, but you know, I used to be able to find tripe at Whole Foods. I can't find it. The, the mm -hmm. um, butcher says they have a hard time finding it. There's something about importing it here at this point that seems to be an issue. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I fed it as much as I can get my hands on it, but yeah, it's not always easy. The reason why I ask is I have noticed both of my puppies' uh, poops uh, get more solid and also their um, gas goes down to almost disappears when I add tripe in the diet at least once or twice a week. And that's green tripe, that's untreated, yeah. nothing mm -hmm. with it, it is really right from the cow. Mm -hmm. And so when I feed tripe in there, and the, in my research on tripe is I know that that is an, a, a place where they're getting those phytonutrients and right. it's coming in because that is the animal being, the cow being a ruminant animal, it's got a three chambered stomach. So it's breaking down all that vegetable matter. And I don't know if that's translating into enzyme, um, a actual place where they could be getting enzymes from. That's a really good question and good thought. I, you know, um... So it could be if they're if they have it because green tribe still has the mm -hmm. digestive material on it, right. which is why it's green mm -hmm. and stinky. And um, so I would assume that probably as a part of that would be both probiotics and enzymes. Mm -hmm. um, now they don't they they're not produced or they don't come from that, or especially enzymes don't come from you know the the lining of the gut, which is you know yeah. basically what type is right, but um, it could be that there's just still some in there and in the green, you know, that's, that's a really good point. And that's, that's probably exactly right. Well, and, you know, and as I, as you study it a little bit more, and as you know, the tripe is the prize part of the animal that gets uh, brought down. So let's say when they studied wolves in the wild, and as they studied them, they noticed that alpha male wolf ate first, for all the other, the entire um, 
all the other wolves, the alpha male ate first. And the first thing he ate was the tripe out of the elk that they had brought down. And so as it was eating the tripe in there, and that was the prized, you know, the actual, you know, I, you can't even call it an organ, but that was a, the prize, you know, the prize part of the elk that they wanted. And so as that broke down, and then the other side of it too, is when we look at our own dogs, when they have upset stomachs, they eat grass. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask, why does my dog eat grass and stuff? And I think that it's really, they're working on having, they have an upset stomach. So I know it's like Leo only eats grass when he has an upset stomach. And I know when I increase his tripe, he doesn't eat as much grass anymore. So being mm -hmm. that it's essentially it's broken down vegetable matter in the mm -hmm. actual um, intestinal organ or intestine right there that they're eating. So that is that, you know, on that side is it makes me think that there are some enzymes in there that are allowing them to digest the raw food because yeah. where they're getting the raw from is matching where they're getting the tripe from. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like that. And I, I do, I, I would like to get it more regularly. I should probably mm -hmm. actually just go through the company who you get it through and, and get yeah. some periodically. Yeah. It's a good one. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that Dee, Dee would love to have you um, come over and buy tripe from her, but yeah. I mean, with all of that, so as you're looking at all of these pieces. So now we're talking about the gas that's getting created in their stomach. It's really coming from their stomach you know, kind of they're not digesting the food that they're eating fully. Yeah, yeah. Saying. And so, yeah, I think, yeah. So that's what enzymes do is they help to break down the food fully. Um, then you have, um, you know, if you have, if it's not, if it doesn't break down fully, then you can have an overgrowth of bad bugs and those can cre create gas. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and if you're at the point where you're switching from, from kibble to raw, then they already have some bad bugs that we yep. need to try to, to balance. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can create farting as well. I think, I mean, there are a lot of things. Farting's normal. So we don't want anybody to think that, that it's not normal, but it's when it's, you know, consistent and mm -hmm. just exceptionally smelly. We wanna, we yeah. wanna try to start, we wanna try to figure out why. And I think the first place to start is good digestive enzymes, tripe, mm -hmm. Um, probiotics, uh, which is either fed through, you know, supplementation. I, and I'm going to tell you, I don't, there aren't a lot of dog supplements that I like. So I don't feed my dogs dog probiotics. Doesn't mean there aren't some good ones out there because we do have a different microbiome than our dogs do. And so we need to keep that in mind. But there are a lot of probiotics that come from the, the vet's office or through these mm -hmm. mainstream you know, online, whatever companies that there are. And I don't, I just don't trust them. So I'd be really, yeah. really careful with dog supplements, whether it's fish oil, you know, the fish oil can be rancid. These things aren't, mm -hmm. aren't um, tracked and, and, you know, watched over like, uh, like human supplements are. And we want to make sure that what we're not trying to do the right thing and actually creating more harm just because, we don't know. And because there are companies who do terrible things <laughs> and yes. put stuff in their food and their products that aren't good for the dogs. And I think the tough part about dog food as well is anything we give our dogs, whether it's supplements are not as heavily regulated as what it is for humans. So you could be buying a probiotic and all the bacteria is dead in it. There's mm -hmm. no light, there's nothing really in there. And you're just really just feeding them a placebo. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, Human that. or animal. And, and, and it is interesting. There are some, there are some data that shows that even dead organisms, dead probiotics have mm -hmm. some kind of benefit, but it's not going to be the benefit of the live organism. So, sure. you know, and I think the point of that is having, you know, if you have a, 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 a probiotic, there's probably the chance of having some, some dead ones in there, but we certainly don't want to mm -hmm. buy something and, you know, spend a bunch of money on it and all of it's dead. And we can't, it's hard to prove that. So that's why we have to go through reputable companies and why for the most part, I use human grade supplements, human, you know, supplements that I use for my mm -hmm. clients, except for very specific things that are supporting a dog liver, right? I don't know the yeah. nutrients well enough to know what a dog needs. That's not food-based. So, mm -hmm. you know, we want to, those are the things that, that we want to be really careful of. 
Yeah. So what if I notice that like, um, I guess my question is, is if I notice an uptick in the amount of gas that they have, what's a good first area I should look at? You know, where should I lean? Should I lean towards the diet or what I'm feeding them? So for example, I know with like Leo with vegetable matter, if I feed too much, he has more gas. Right. So yeah. from some of those cases. So what would you think is step one? If my well, dog is just- is Yeah, I think it kind of depends on where you're starting. So if you're starting with kibble, then you got to look at the kibble. So, you know, we've yep. said it enough times that kibble- is very high in carbohydrates. It's not not mm -hmm. high enough in fat or protein. Dogs are not right. do, don't do well with carbohydrates, and so um, you know that in and of itself is going to create damage. It's going to create a, a a lack of health and a lack of the ability to thrive. Um, it's going to you know lack some nutrient density because of the synthetic nutrients that it has in it, and just the fact that it's a dead food. So mm -hmm. um, you know we want to start there. Now we can look at. Are we feeding our dog kibble with a little bit of raw meat and maybe a little bit of vegetable? So yeah, are you feeding your dog full, whole vegetables that they can't break down because they don't break them down well, you know, right. or are you putting in, in your food processor, which needs to be done or, you know, cooking them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, those are the things to think about. And then moving on, like you said, if you're feeding full on raw, maybe the vegetable material, maybe it's just too much for them to handle, or maybe you need to switch vegetables. Um, you know, you can do canned pumpkin. I know right now I pulled a, just a whole bunch of, cause we're getting a freeze and I'm so mad, but <laughs> I, I, I know. pulled all of my winter squashes out. So I stick those out this time of year. I'll take, I'll put three or four or five winter squashes cut in half and cook them and have them for a week or two. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so I'll just scoop out some of that and give each of it to the dog. So it's super easy to yeah. do. Um, and it gives them a little bit of that vegetable, th that fiber that they need, mm -hmm. because as we've always said, and what I learned from you is we have to give them that because they're not getting fur. Mm -hmm. They're so not they getting the have... fiber that they would naturally just uh, eat and encounter indirectly. Yeah. Um, and really, and I love your story about going to your garden, garden and getting those winter squashes and doing that type of stuff. That's incredible. Like going after right at the source, another great way to do it. And this is where I don't have winter squashes in my garden. So I have to just buy a can of organic. Yeah. Pumpkin. yeah. I mean, it's a dollar 50. So and then that's right. something that has a couple tablespoons in the meal. Mm -hmm. And I usually do it every other day. I'll add a couple tablespoons of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed if I go too much with pumpkin, they get gas again. Mm -hmm. And they start farting a bunch because I don't know if I'm just moving stuff through their system more efficiently or I'm, I'm basically I'm sliding it through their digestive system so fast that it's not able to break down all the, you know, the diet that we are feeding them in a raw based diet. So I don't know if that has, if there's something that they would eat or take that would speed up digestion, kind of like eating too fast, or is there something that would um, perpetuate gas or burping in that case? I don't know. Well, that's <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's why we do this, is we go research it and look at it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would think that if we humanize a little bit through this mm -hmm. period, when I eat too fast, I burp. And like- Yeah, okay, so kind of like Daisy, you know, Yep. That would, yeah, if you eat too fast, you're taking in air. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that would make sense as far as the burping, you know. Yep. The farting, you know, I would say, does it make a difference? Maybe, but you know, so many dogs, wolves, whatever, not, not all dogs wolf food down, but a lot of them do. I mean, they're kind of built to eat quickly because mm -hmm. they, have to, they have to eat quickly because, you know, who else is going to come in and grab their food? Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's why they have the acidity that they have in their stomach is to break mm -hmm. food down and break it down fully and entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, including bones. So, um, I don't know if it would, if that, if, if the speed of the food would, would create farting. I think there are times though, you know, with domesticated dogs, we have to be careful with the speed that they eat, because if we do start feeding them whole or uh, raw food, 
sometimes for dogs that do wolf food down, we've got to be careful with the bones. We've got to be careful with the meat and how big the chunks are. Um, because I mean, I watched my little one when I got her early on, I, <laughs> It was my fault, but I had some chicken thighs and I, I was weighing them out mm -hmm. and then put them down without cutting them up. And so the two bigger dogs are probably fine with that, but she took a whole mm -hmm. chicken thigh and struggled a little bit to get it down. I was like, oh my gosh, that was so stupid. She got it down and they're used to it, but right. I'm very careful about that now. And that's something for everybody else to kind of be aware of, you know, they're meant to eat it, but if they don't know and they don't chew it, it could mm -hmm. be a problem. So especially yeah. if you're feeding, feeding bones, um, which we need to do, they have to have bone, but you got to be really careful. If you decide you want to feed a whole drumstick or a whole chicken thigh, um, you've got to know your dog. You've got to know your dog. And if it's, mm -hmm. if it has the ability, if not, I take a butcher knife, it's just a big butcher knife and I just hack it in a couple of pieces. So I know that they mm -hmm. can, they can get it down. So it's, you got to think about right. the size of your dog, the abilities of your dog. We still have to keep in mind that they're domesticated, um, but we want to be sure that we are, um, you know, giving them what they would have in the wild as mm -hmm. best we can. Right. And I, they're not learning by example from other dogs that are eating raw or eating wild prey. They're somewhat learning this on their own. Yeah. And of course, I mean, you're going to take a dog, you're going to put a chicken leg in front of them. My first instinct, if I was a dog, was to eat the whole chicken leg so you can't mm -hmm. take it away from me. Right. Almost like, oh my gosh, I got this and I'm not supposed to have it. So I'm just going to suck it down before mom sees mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. kind of perspective, yeah. which yeah. it can be dangerous. So that's another side of it is if you're feeding raw or if you're feeding whole chicken bones, know how to give the Heimlich maneuver. So if they mm -hmm. are choking, it's yeah. very easy to do just yeah. like with a human. And so really with that is you're allowing them to mm -hmm. have those moments. But then if you are feeding raw in that case and you're keeping a consistent diet and it's that, you know, you're basically following a pattern, you're mixing your proteins, but you're following very much of that similar protocol. I'm giving two tablespoons every two days. I think at some point the body starts to get used to or starts to adjust to it. Yeah, it adjusts and it adapts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it keeps, you know, those incidences of farting too much or stuff like that. So if your dog is farting a lot, take a look at their diet. Take a look at what you're feeding them. Mm -hmm. If you're feeding mm -hmm. kibble, feed raw. <laughs> just do it. Just, just do it. Like I can say like, oh, you can, no. I mean, there's nothing good about kibble. I've never found a good kibble brand, period. There's not. You're wasting your money and you're, you're, you're short of your dog's life. Yep. And so with that, so yeah. So, and there's some kibble that I've talked to individuals that give terrible farts. So it's really, it's how your dog is digesting and breaking down the mm -hmm. food that they have. Then the other side is I've seen people go to raw and they add 30% vegetable matter to the diet for a dog that maybe mm -hmm. it upsets their stomach. And so knowing yeah. your dog and knowing your pet and saying, okay, this worked and running the experiments, give yourself time to slowly introduce these foods. So for example, when I started to feed both my puppies raw, this is about four years ago, and I just went all in because you, once you study the research on it and all that kind of thing, you're like, I would never feed kibble. And there was no transition. It was just, you're, that's what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And so when I did it, I then took one vegetable. I took cucumbers and I popped it in their food and I chopped it up. Didn't see any issues with cucumbers when I fed it to both, a, both of my chihuahua that's now 14 and Leo who's seven. Mm -hmm. And so then I introduced spinach. I took out the cucumber because I didn't want to mix this up and I introduced spinach. That caused itching. And then one thing I did notice too is it caused excessive farting as well because they were not, Leo was not digesting the actual spinach or the vegetable matter that was going his mm -hmm. diet. And then noticed later on, every time he got vegetables, that's when farting happened and that's when itching happened. So then we could direct correlate and I could point to exactly what may be causing it. Mm -hmm. I have noticed that yes, I can feed pumpkin like you were doing, but too much pumpkin causes farting again. So it's really knowing your dog yeah. to the best. And it's really just observing. 
and just creating those moments of correlation and creating that space to do it by only introducing one food at a time. Right. And allowing them, then watching them, seeing what they do differently. Do they fart more? Do they not fart more? And that type of stuff and aiding in that digestion. And so, and I love the fact that you feed enzymes. Enzymes are great for breaking down food, but then you actually, it sounds like you use an enzyme that is more of a human grade enzyme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one that I would give to, to, to my clients and it breaks down vegetables, proteins, um, okay. you know, fibers and fats and yeah, all of it. All right, so really, if you have a dog that's just farting a ton, this is something that you want to take a look at how their food is getting broken down. And if it's yep. breaking down enough, then that's going to limit the amount of farting that happens. Not enough, they're going to fart more if they're, they get food that they can't digest properly. And so really why they're farting is a lack of digestion, essentially. Yeah, well, for the most part, I mean, I think that there are multiple reasons, but yeah, for my girls, I think that it's yeah, it's, it's, it's having the right enzymes is what I'm seeing. And so why they, they, they need the enzymes, you know, I'd love to not be able to give it to them. And maybe sometimes I can, and maybe they just still have some work to be done. You know, none of them have gotten, you know, kibble since they've been with me, but, um, yeah. you know, we're always, always working on it, but, mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather give them enzymes and some other farts. Yeah. <laughs> and both of you, all three of your dogs are unbelievably healthy. I mean, yeah. they are awesome. And so you do an incredible job. So really, as you go after it with, as a pet parent is think of it as feeding your dog as a regular experiment until you get it dialed into this is exactly what I can feed them. And you, what you will feed your dog is different than what your best friend might feed their mm -hmm. dog. Because well, dogs are individuals just like humans are. And so we've got to, we've got to, got to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And if they fart, it just happens. We just got to suck it, it up and deal with it. It does. They 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 have a digestive system just like we do. We fart and they That's fart. right. Yep. <laughs> Amen. Well, Nikki, this has been a fun show. This is awesome. <laughs> I hope everybody learned something today about why their dogs are farting and some steps that you can take to actually help and improve the amount of smell that you have when you actually sit down at night and watch TV. So uh, when you go through those moments, yes, you can give them a better sense. You can actually help out their digestion and mm -hmm. help the improvement. And you'll notice it by the amount that they fart. Yeah. So um, thank you. And what is the best way to get a hold of you, Nikki? Um, everything is Taste Life Nutrition. So it's my website, it's my Facebook, it's all the social media. Um, anything's Taste Life Nutrition. So um, I'll tell you, we're starting another challenge um, awesome. for the course. So we're starting another challenge on November 9th, which is a seven day, instead of a five day, seven day no sugar challenge. And it's a, okay. a feel for what it's like to be a part of a 12 week course that I've co created. Um, that's really, really comprehensive. And so um, I'm super excited to, to do that again. It's always fun to do. So we're, uh, we're, it's called supercharge your immune system. So look for it. Awesome. Well, and I just finished your challenge. Yeah. And I found it eye opening to awesome. the point now I'm thinking about what I eat during the day and anything I eat after a certain period of time. I've noticed, guess what stopped? And if you guys watch the show regularly, you'll notice that I got a little bit vulnerable and told you about sweating at night and stuff. Mm -hmm. Stopped. My That's sleep amazing. has gotten better. Awesome. I've actually slept through the night for the last, since I started the, thinking about it and started reducing the amount of sugar. So great. Diet, I've yeah. actually started to sleep better. So yeah. it's one of those things that. is you don't know how good you can feel. Mm -hmm. until you start. And when you start taking the steps, I'm not going back. So you'd be happy to know my gummy bear consumption has gone down. Yay. <laughs> Even though they're organic, Nikki, I Doesn't still matter. just, I know. Organic sugar is sugar. I know. <laughs> okay. I've dealt with that moment. Okay. Yeah. Of getting past the gummy bears and, you know, the red ones were my favorite, but I've given those up now because I like to sleep at night and I don't like to be uncomfortable when I sleep. So yeah, it's yeah. been just eye opening. So I highly recommend take the nutritional, 
um, challenge that Nikki has in regards to, and she will give you this eye-opening awareness about your own health and improving it. So I also want to do a shout out for everybody that are loyal followers. It is Nikki's 15th anniversary today. Uh, so, yay. All right, congratulations. Should I, should I show everybody my gift? Uh, you could, yes, which should is, it's pretty awesome gift. All so right. bear with me because this is not, and it's getting dark outside. So I'm hoping we can see it. Oh yeah, we'll be able to see it. Can you she tell what it show. is? For our anniversary, a red 1970 <laughs> Corvette. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, is your husband looking at dating somebody? Like, or like, you know, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> My wife he, would kill me. Yeah, yeah. No, he, um, he, he, this is not his choice in classic cars. He likes the Mustang, but he's, you know, from literally from childhood, and we were talking about this earlier, I, um, I've i loved Corvettes. I don't know why we never had one. I just think that they've always, always just been super sleek and pretty. Yeah. Um, and I was a little kid telling my mom and dad, I'm going to have a Corvette one day. And so here I am, 48 years old, and I have my little uh, red Corvette. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So happy anniversary, Nikki. Thank so you. <laughs> just unbelievably happy that you made it 15 years and you guys are doing yeah. awesome. So yeah. um, you can always reach out to me at Parsley Pet. Um, go to parsleypet.com and have a nutritional blueprint conducted. If your dog's farting a ton and you want to assess if, if I adjust this diet, is it the right diet for my dog? Well, we can tell you that. And we can tell you that with accuracy on where you should be adjusting the diet to achieve that ideal health that you want for your pet. So thank you again, Nikki, for the great show today. And I hope everybody has an incredible day. Yep. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Take it easy.